Hey, hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Chastity. Here we talk about beauty, entertainment, celebrities, books, movies, animes, and kind of anything else that garners my attention this week. So this is a video I have slapped together in the last like hour. I originally was not going to do this video. This was like a continuation of one of my TikToks. If you don't follow me on TikTok, I make like anti hauls on my TikTok. I post them every single Friday. So if you want to see more like beauty content from me, you should definitely check out my TikTok. Link to that will be in the description box below if you want to check that out. But I was filming my TikToks for tomorrow and we were talking about Benefit. They had released new products and the 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 dragging, the rant that was on my spirit could not fit in a minute. So I decided to bring that over here on my YouTube channel because like I just feel like we don't talk about like benefit in the way that we talk about ColourPop even though they're actually kind of worse. Now if you are in the makeup sphere, you love makeup, love makeup related content, then you would know that ColourPop Cosmetic is in the nicest way I can put it, allergic to black people. They very rarely make products that people darker than beige can use. I really feel like though they are very cheap in price, the diversity is really bad. Their eyeshadow palettes are less than desirable when it comes to using it when you are of a darker skin tone. Um, every once in a while, they'll like take a Benadryl and give, you know, darker skin people here something. You know, every once in a while they'll be like, okay, okay, darkies, here you go, eyeshadow palette that you can use. But they still slack on like blushes and bronzers and stuff like that. Those are still very not inclusive. And ColourPop, very rightfully, is consistently criticized and dragged for this, for not making inclusive products. But a brand that is I would even argue worse when it comes to inclusivity than ColourPop which is Benefits Cosmetics it's just never on anyone's radar even though like there's always like these small rumblings of being like their staple product the hula bronzer and being like yeah you know darker skin people can use it but you know it's whatever so you might be wondering what is the product the benefit product that pushed me over the edge and the product that did that was their um, the 4O Scope palette. Now, these are three palettes, they're face palettes. And if you are naive like I am, you would assume that the palettes would be one for light, one for medium, and one for dark. Because that's usually what brands do if they release multiple face palettes. It's for different shade range. It's supposed to encompass the lights, mediums, maybe shrunk spicy, a medium dark, and then a deep dark. That's how it usually goes. No brand releases multiple face palettes for just white people or for just fair skinned people. That legitimately does not make any sense. But they're not benefit. Benefit is so strong <laughs> in their anti dark skinness that they made three separate palettes all made for light people and within these palettes there are at least three of the exact same shades now the palettes are very weird some shades are like two shades are big and then two shades are small so each palette a different like a different product a different it could be a blush it could be a bronzer it could be a highlight one of those two of those are going to be big the other two are going to be small again i don't know for what it if either make everything the same size or don't like it like why would you i'm not going to get into the mind benefit but again three out of the four products are the exact same in every single palette for what for why would you even go about making three separate palettes if they were going to encompass all the same product? Now, up until I decided to make this video, I really didn't know what Benefit had for products. I don't really check for Benefit. I don't really think anyone does. Like, if outside of, like, Benefit staple products, I don't really think you look beyond that at Benefit. So, because at this point, I only ever knew about, like, the Hula bronzer that, again, I can't use. 
and I've heard like amazing things about like their brow products like the benefit like a brow and all that stuff back in like 2016 which is actually how like the brand really like rose to fame and stuff like that and got to the place it is today is because of their staple products including their eyebrow products that went like crazy when they first came out and so because I knew so little of the brand I had decided to do a quick little like look on their website to see what type of products they had because you know what maybe it was just the staple products that really wasn't given much for for the dark skin girls maybe they had other products that were actually super inclusive that like no one really talks about because a lot of brands out there and a lot of products just kind of get swept under the rug and no one really talks about them because there's such oversaturation in the makeup community so I was like, I'm gonna go on, you know, their website and see what it is. So I have my notes right here. We went through the major categories where like skin tone really affects the products. So we didn't touch on the like brow products because brow products are like universal. But we did go through eyes, which is basically just eyeshadow palettes. Then we did blushes, bronzers, highlights. We did foundations and we did concealers. Now Benefit only has one eyeshadow palette and that is the big, beautiful eye palette that is the only eyeshadow palette they have available on their website which is weird because i feel like they've been around for a little bit to, so i would you would think they have maybe like a, a handful of eyeshadow palettes but i guess like eye products really isn't like a benefits gig but we have right here the big beautiful eyes palette and um it gives ashy it certainly does when i look at this palette like realistically like the mattes I could actually only use like two maybe that that satiny plum shade as well if I like it maybe doesn't have too much glitter in it but like I really can't do much when it comes to mattes in that eyeshadow palette that is definitely a white girl eyeshadow palette if I've ever seen one because like no mattes for me like really like there's how many mattes in this palette and I can realistically only use two. Next we're touching on base products that aren't foundation. The first one is of course the critically acclaimed, the Colts Classic, the reason why Benefit is not in the gutter, the Hula Bronzer. I have heard so much about this bronzer since I've started getting into makeup, which was around like 2016. Oh, I tell you, if there's a bronzer that is going to be recommended by, you know, the, the pale faces, it's going to be the Hula bronzer. We also have like another bronzer that's like Dallas Rosie, which is equally as pale. I think it may be even like slightly darker, but not dark enough. Moving on to blushes, Benefit has three. They have Georgia, Gold, Russian Rocketeer, but don't know if I care about those last two. They're, I would assume, most popular ones because this is the one that pops up in their other palettes and stuff like that is Georgia it's a peachy pinky you know blush again not meant for and their other blushes are equally as baby pink and light and very not for black girls not black girl friendly Georgia is again it's just it's one of those things that like I've been told was really good and I just have to take your word for it because it does not show up in my skin color. Moving to highlights, their most popular highlight is Cookie. Then they have Tickle. Then they have Dandelion Twinkle. Not to be confused with the Dandelion, uh, the Dandelion Brightening Finishing Powder. Can't use that. Didn't even want to mention it. But then we have those three highlights. It may be possibly slightly like finagle my way with like Cookie. But like the rest of the highlights I would have to use as like a topper on top of other highlights that look good on me. And so I can have maybe like a little flex of that. But like, no. Like I mentioned, Hula, Georgia, and Cookie are three of their most popular like face powders. And when I tell you in every single face palette that Benefit makes, at least two out of three of those products mentioned are in them. Benefit does not make new products when it comes to their face powders. They literally just make palettes cramming in their favorite products or their most liked products to sell to people, which doesn't make any sense to me because if these are staple products, people already own them. 
So why would these people be enticed to buy these other palettes with the same products in them? Especially when you think about bronzers, highlights, and blushes do not run out quickly. Like you're not hitting pan on those products like soon. Like those are especially like I've heard like the Hula bronzers like take forever to hit pan. Forever. I'm talking about people who've had them in their project pans get frustrated after a while because it seems like you're never going to hit pan. So it doesn't make any sense, again, for these to be staple products and then put into every palette. Because Benefit is not a brand that, like, brings in new eyes. You either you like shopping with Benefit or you don't. So if you have a bunch of recurring customers, why are you filling your palettes with products they already own? Like, more than half the palette is... You, I'm sorry, my brain cannot wrap itself around how the stupidity behind this, that you're selling palettes with your best products, like people don't already own them. Again, a bronzer, a highlight, and a blush are not a foundation. You can run through foundations. You're not running through bronzers and highlights and blushes like that. You're Because those are products that are less is more. You build up those products. You're not slathering a bunch of highlight, bronzer, and blush on your face. So now we're going to move on to my favorite section of makeup, and that is complexion products. So the first foundation we're going to talk about is the Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation. Now, this does only come in 12 shades, but it is a powder foundation, and you can get away with having less wrong. You know the bullshit that the white people be telling us the reason why their the powder foundations are never extended. It's because you know you can get away with it a little more, even though I feel like twelve is not a good shade range. It's not bad for a powder. It's not great. It's just decent. But there's twelve shades, and you know. That's something I don't think it's evenly dispersed for the darker skin. I feel like there's a lot of jumps, but you know, that's just me. Next is the Hello Happy Air Stick Foundation that also has 12 shades. Why? Why? Because stick foundations should have a decent shade range because undertones are a thing. Again, I feel like people try to pull the same thing with like powder being like, well, like you can get away. No, I'm not taking the chance to look casket ready. Mm -mm. Next is the Hello Happy Brightening, the Flawless Brightening Foundation, which on their site only has it in like travel size. There is not a full bottle of that, a full size bottle of it. And that only comes in um, six shades. Explain that one to me. You cannot get away with a liquid foundation and it only being six shades. That does not make any sense. Which I'm pretty sure their Hello Happy stuff came out, if not this year, last year. Because I remember like the packaging made me deeply uncomfortable. I really hate the fact that their foundations have faces on it. That's weird. Give that shit a rise. But explain to me why we have liquid foundations coming in six shades Th that's just bad like beyond that being racist that's just bad business because not just black people come in darker shades like asian people come in darker shades latino people come in like a lot of people darker than beige out here and you completely cut off that stream, that stream of money. That revenue, you're not getting it. Because you're not making products for them to use. I, like, I, listen, I was trying to look past the 12s. But six, six foundation shades. Next, we're going to get on to their concealers. The first one is the Boeing Cakeless Concealer, which comes in 14 shades, which... You, I feel like people argue that you don't need as many concealer shades. So why do y'all have more concealer shades than you have foundation shades? All of them. 
that doesn't make any sense again 14 still isn't that great when you think of like the shade ranges that have been released for you know concealer but 14 is not no way shape or form piss poor it's okay i have to use in person to see the undertones for the darker shades because if they're just such wild jumps what's for the point next is the boeing industrial strength concealer i that name concerns me that comes in six shades which is sick what i i have to ask does benefit know there are people on this planet who aren't white i'm i'm, con I'm concerned because six concealer shades is it because they're industrial they're extra strength you, you don't need okay next is the boeing brightening concealer that comes in three shades why are we getting worse like as we scroll down it just gets t even more terrible all right next is the boeing airbrush concealer that comes in two shades and then there's the boeing hydrating concealer that comes in three shades so what the fuck what the actual fuck benefit these shade ranges are actually abysmal it is it's quite concerning that it just feels like to buy benefits products you have to take the paper bag test because you can't explain this to me that having like foundations and like concealers that all have under 20 shades makes sense and especially the hello happy stuff the hello happy stuff is recent again i don't really shop at benefit that's not really my gig so maybe some of these products are old which again okay sure but again we've seen a surge of inclusion why not expand shade ranges why has no one in the corporate office brought that up no we, we just never going to extend because for there to be concealers with six to two two shades that's an absolute problem how was that even okay before? It, it, it truly blows my mind that like Benefit has been operating a business like that and they have not, and they went under before Becca. Because I, I strongly believe that Benefit is the next company to go. Because again, staple products be damn. What happens when people find new favorite bronzers? Because it will not be forever that Benefit has the best. That's bullshit. If you genuinely one brand will have the best product for the oh, the end of time, you're smoking dick, okay? There's going to be another brand. Because there's so many good indie brands out here that are doing the damn thing, okay? They are making products. They're, do, they're being innovative. They're giving the girls inclusivity. Everything we're asking for. And then there's Benefit. So there's no way that Benefit will be the only beauty brand that has a good bronzer. You're lying to yourself. You believe that. I just, it's so blatant. Like the, we don't cater to darker skinned people, like narrative. It's so clear. It's clear as fucking day that Benefit has no intentions of ever making products for darker skinned people or just making an innovative product, period they it's very strange to me that because this is kind of how brands that have staple products move they move real sus they move real suspicious they don't seem to care about what we are the, the decade we are in now trying to keep up if you're not going to be innovative at least keep up at least follow the trends and benefit seems to not do that they just seem to march the beat of their own offbeat drums and just disregard darker skinned people. Because again, darker skinned people are not just black people. So there's multiple other groups of people that are being like forgotten because benefits like white power is what it is.
And again, with the like sudden down, not sudden, we saw it coming, the downfall of Becca Cosmetics, there's no way that Benefit, Smashbox, a couple other of these girls are not steadily following forward. Because again, staple product to only hold you for so long. They can only, they only can. And that's what's, because like, they are beating a dead horse with Hula, Georgia, and Cookie. Because they're in every single face palette and you can't explain to me how that makes sense if i already own the products why am i buying new products with them already in there that doesn't make any sense benefit baby listen you have the girls on lock with the eyebrow products now give us something else that can also work for darker skin people well actually no to be fair and to be honest y'all can keep benefit because benefit don't got nothing i need because I can go anywhere for eyebrow products. And again, and $20 mascaras are funny. I wear too many false lashes to pay $27 for some goddamn mascara. Ooh, again, you smoking dick. Benefit is truly disappointing. And so stuck in 2016. You can tell that this brand has not been able to move past this prime. It is stuck there. That is like how some of you millennials are stuck in the 90s. Like that was the decade you gatekeep. Because that's when you were the greatest you've ever been. Benefit refuses to leave 2016. And in 2016, it was completely normal to have abysmal shade ranges like this and not care the dark skinned people. Because the assumption was black people, black women, black gays, black whatevers, black, you know, genuine forming individuals did not spend money on makeup, could not afford expensive makeup and that is the air that benefit gives it brings us back to those horrible fucking times where it was just like we don't make products for darker skinned people because they don't buy them how can i buy things that don't exist and benefit is like the the, the pillar of that that time that we just didn't make makeup for dark skinned people and honestly, I just want this, I, I don't, listen, because they have employees that need to pay. So I don't want to say I want this brand to fall, but I wish nothing but the worst to this brand. You know, I don't, I really don't think Benefit has 10 years in it. Five is pushing it. Because again, what are you buying beyond staple products? That can only keep you float for so long. So yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well <laughs> sorry about this really like impromptu video like i really just sat here for an hour and just wrote this outline out really quickly because a minute video was not going to get my frustrations of benefit out the way i needed it to in this lengthy video but yeah what other mega brands do you see have the similar energy to benefit and their you know refusal to make inclusive products what brands do you think in the next five to ten years that were once upon a time titans in the makeup industry and once upon a time were staples are going to follow in Becca's footsteps and kind of just slowly dissolve? Honestly, like I said, Benefit, Smashbox, maybe even NARS because NARS really ain't doing like it used to do. Uh, there's a couple others who I'm just like, these brands are not going to make it ten more years. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.